All right, guys, name is Tyler, aka Nanogenics, and today, guys, we are talking Dragon Ball Legends and just how free-to-play friendly it appears to be from what we've seen from Beta 1 and now being onto Beta 2, and we've actually seen some actual new stuff out of Beta 2, which is sort of why I want to hop in and discuss this. So that's what we're going to talk today. We're going to talk um, how does it handle premium currency and giving that out in a free way, obviously. How does it handle the characters and the PvP and everything else. And that's what I want to talk all compiled into today's one video. So, with all that said, without any further ado, let's hop in and let's talk free to play on Dragon Ball Legends. First up is Talking Chrono Crystals. This game's premium currency, of course, the Dragon Stones from Dokkan Battle. And we'll probably talk a little Dokkan here and there in today's video, mostly because it is the other premium uh, Dragon Ball mobile game. But uh, right here, what we're looking at is the sort of what I'm gonna call a scratch off, and it's the beginner login bonus. And if you log in for the next seven days, each day you get a different login bonus so for day two we're getting 300 chrono crystals day three we get 50 and so forth but it'd be really cool if they utilize this and they do this even more so you scratch it off you get all the way to day seven and then maybe not the exact same one right because this is the beginner login bonus but we get a whole new one so you complete this seven days and then you get a new seven day login bonus to uh, obtain to go through and obtain different things and maybe it's not all chrono crystals every single time right like because they, I mean, they themselves are, are going to just constantly probably give away the premium currency, but they may be more generous with it than what we've seen in Dokkan. But what I mean by that is, for example, a different one once you're past this beginner login bonus is on day one you get training items, on day two you get soul ability uh, items to use to level up your characters, then day three maybe you get Chrono Crystals and so forth. You can kind of get the idea there that I'm going with. The cool thing they're doing with login bonuses, you can see there it says next daily login bonus and what I mean by or what it means by that is basically you're selecting the actual login bonus you're gonna get the next day you log in are you low on Zenny choose Zenny are you low on obviously the premium currency chrono crystals then choose chrono crystals do you need training items to train your characters up to get even at a higher level choose that do you need a skip ticket because now they have skip tickets where if you're farming events you can use those skip tickets and you don't have to fight and it just it just gives you a potential that drops for the particular event so that is also another cool thing that they are doing now before we move past uh just talking chrono crystals and start talking how they're handling characters and everything else in this game uh it does look like they're also going to be doing a daily discount on a single summon for 20 chrono crystals so uh, the way this game is going to handle it is a hundred chrono crystals gets you a standard single summit a thousand gives you a what they're calling repeat summit but i'm gonna call a multi so each day uh right now during the beta as you log in you get a 20 chrono crystal discount summon so if you're looking at it from the perspective of the beginner and also your daily i mean you're almost gonna be able to summon every single day for quite a long time if you just do that 20 uh chrono crystal daily summon each day which is Actually, I mean, that's a pretty positive thing because there's many times in Dokkan where you aren't even able to summon each day because they're only giving you one Dragon Stone and you need five Dragon Stones to summon uh, and there's no sort of uh, event that's happened or anything like that. So you're waiting sometimes four or five days just to be able to summon one time in Dokkan. Whereas with this, if you just saved your, your Chrono Crystals, you might be able to summon every single day for like a month. I mean, 20, 20 a day, just from just from day two, they're already giving you enough to be able to do like 15 summons. Uh, granted, you know that's you may not want to wait that long but i'm just i'm just saying you're literally able to do 15 summons from just day two's login bonus which is a pretty fantastic thing next up before we move completely away from just talking premium currency within this game is that uh it looks like there's a lot of ways to obtain it there's going to be daily missions that allow you to do it you'll do something that day that gives you some chrono crystals uh outside of the course just logging in each actual event um, and sort of story mission allows for challenges within those missions, uh, whether it be to perfect it and not lose a member, to change out different members, to do a particular uh, uh, move set with Goku or Krillin or whatever it might be, or dodging attacks or whatever it is, it allows you challenges that gives you even more Chrono Crystals, not to mention just completing the event, the event or story mission itself gives you said Chrono Crystals. So it's looking like there is a lot of ways to obtain Chrono Crystals in this game, which is why I'm focusing on it so much because it is the premium currency, right? It's something that is very important. If you are watching this right now, trying to determine, is this game gonna be very free to play friendly? And I'm just gonna give you a spoiler right now as we move forward. It looks very free to play friendly. It looks significantly more free to play fr friendly than Dokkan, even though a lot of people were super worried because this is gonna be so heavily PVP focused. But I also have noticed Bondi taking a step back and advertising it more like, hey, this is gonna have a full-fledged out story, one you may actually care about. This is gonna have events. Uh, it's going to have something new we just saw from Beta 2 we're about to talk about. 
Uh, it's got a lot of single player stuff. There are adventures where you send your characters off to obtain items for you. It, it, there's a lot of stuff in this game that isn't just playing the PvP aspect of the game itself, which I think it's probably a good time to hop into that as well. The new thing they've added as part of Beta 2 is this scout mission to obtain Krillin. So uh, right now there is an event that you can take on Raditz to obtain Raditz. So that's one way to do it. And now there's a scout mission, which it says scout mission Krillin. Hinting at that, there's going to have scout missions for many other different characters. Now, the way you obtain a character in this game is you need 100 crystals of said character before they're usable. When you summon a character, you're summoning for 100 crystals of that character, which feeds into the limit-breaking aspect of the game, which we'll talk about towards the later part of this video. But the scout mission allows you to, on your first clear, obtain a Krillin, allows you to do it five times a day, and each time you do it, at least for me, you get a 20 crystal drop. So if you do that, at least you do that all five times a day, which it's a pretty quick mission, you'll get 100 Chrono Crystals that go towards Krillin, and each one, each time you get 100 more, you're basically going towards another limit break. Now, to completely limit break a character, again, we're going to talk more on this in a second, you need 9,999, so you can imagine the grind would be, it'll be a little bit of a grind, but that's kind of sort of the point of a lot of these games. Now, before I actually move any full, more forward in this video, if you're new to the channel and haven't done so yet, we're going to be here for all kinds of Legends content and everything else, consider going down there, subscribing, and joining the hashtag NanoFam today, consider slapping like on today's video for breaking down uh, Legends and what we've kind of seen so far from the beta Consider slapping a like on the video. Not only though are there just these scout missions and events to obtain these characters, which by the way, Raditz is a very, I know you think Raditz and you're like, ah, it's Raditz, but he's actually a very solid character in to use online on this game. But another thing cool that they're doing with it as well is Z rank. So right now, if you can get to Z rank 20, you're going to obtain a Super Saiyan Goku. A Super Saiyan Goku, guys. And I know when you hear that, you're like, yeah, but I can go get a Super Saiyan Goku on Dokkan Battle from that free event that's live all the time. But I think it's a little bit different obtaining a Super Saiyan Goku in this game. And that's another thing too, is from what I what I can tell, as far as your characters are the exact same level, uh, right? You're not going against a level 500 character with a level 200 character. Um, it doesn't matter too much who you're using. You're gonna have, it's gonna come down to a lot more skill than it is just like, oh, this guy has a Super Saiyan Goku, I have a Yamcha, rip me. Like, no, it's still gonna be absolutely, uh, types are gonna play a big part into it, and uh, similar to Dokkan Battle, as well as your own skill and how you're fighting uh, the character is going to be. And then when it comes to events, events again, it's just gonna matter a lot on levels, which you can just go take on uh, weaker events, level your characters up, come back to an event, and be able to take on these events pretty easily. Again, the reason I'm referencing all this is because beating stuff with uh, characters that maybe you're not summoning for all the time uh, it does seem to be incredibly and completely possible with the characters that you were just given in the game. Again, all from a beta aspect right now, but it's still looking very, very good for free-to-play players. And then obviously another important one is that uh, if you do PvP, I wanted to focus a little bit on story towards the... Uh, sort of beginning part of this video, but uh, as you do PvP, you also get more Chrono Crystals as you rank up uh, and you do certain things uh, within the PvP that completes missions and, and everything else. So uh, let's recap before we hop into Limit Break. The many ways to obtain the Prima Currency right now, obviously daily logins. Hopefully they continue those scratch off cards is what I'm calling them again, the beginner login bonus, but hopefully they continue stuff like that. Challenges on events, story missions, etc. The actual missions themselves that are built into the game where they'll have daily ones, ones that are tied to events. Uh, so as Raditz comes around, they do one for maybe Nappa, they do one for, you know, Broly, whatever character, with Janimba, whatever character they want to do one for, um, there will be missions that are tied to that that gives you, uh, it gives you more than just premium currency, but it does have missions that will reward you with the Chrono Crystals themselves. Uh, many ways to obtain characters via events, these scout missions, or obviously Z ranking up, because I'm sure they'll do more of that too. Uh, that's something we didn't really see, we don't see a lot in Dokkan They have the Thousand Day where you get uh, Goku, they have some others where you get like, uh, other characters like Hercule and stuff like that, but not something to the extent that, hey, you hit this rank on our game, here you go. Here's a free Super Saiyan Goku. That's pretty awesome. So many ways to obtain these characters uh, and the premium currency in the game. But last but not least, let's talk on limit breaking, a big one that I've seen a lot of people talking about in the community because it's something that you'll be doing when you're summoning for characters and you're limit breaking said characters. So no one really corrected me. Again, correct me down below if I'm wrong on this, but from what I can tell, if you have a fully seven star limit world character, you're gonna have a plus 8% to their Z ability. We'll talk more on that in a second. And they'll have a plus 20% to their stats. Now you hear that and you're like, oh my God, but if my character's not limit broke, then uh, I'm gonna be down 20% on stats and a Z ability. 
But the thing about it is they made it to where limit breaking is significantly easy. If you pretty much just get two of any character, you've already limit broke one time. So uh, you're not at such a big disadvantage that it may seem. And the other thing too is that as you do these scout missions and stuff like that, you'll be able to probably seven star limit break a Krillin. It may take some time. You'll limit break a Krillin probably fully and completely and uh, you'll have a seven star limit broke character on your side anyway if that is super important to you. But when it comes right down to it, if you can just even get to three star, that is a plus 10% to your stats, so plus 5% for one star, plus another 5% for two star, and three star gives you your Z ability, and then gives you your plus 3% to your specific Z ability for whatever character you're running. It becomes a thing of like, it's not that big of a deal at all, because now, now if you're facing off against a seven star limit broke character, again, requires 9,999 of said uh, crystals of said character, um, you're still not at that big of a disadvantage for significantly more investment on said character, right? Like, if you're at three star, you've only invested, like, I want to say somewhere around 500 crystals total to get to a three star limit broke character. Maybe a thousand. I might, I might be a little bit off on that. But either way, not too many crystals in comparison to 9,999. And you're only at a disadvantage of about 5% on their Z ability and 10% on stats. So it's still going to come down heavily to skill and just as long as you're actually going against someone at the same level, which once this game fully releases, I'm going to recommend people probably um, rank up pretty heavily before they just start really caring about hopping into PvP. I'm going to hop into PvP for fun, but if you're really hopping in and you're getting frustrated at losing because you're at a lower level, just level your characters up. It's super simple. They are very generous, it seems to be, on energy. They do allow you to store energy and then replenish your energy uh, quite often from what I've been able to tell here on the beta. And energy is your stamina resource to run events uh, and story missions and when doing friend battles and PvP it takes no no energy at all so again that's another aspect I guess that we should have touched we I guess I'm glad we did touch on for free-to-play players is because being able to actually play the game without having to use premium currency to refresh very generous with energy and does allow for a storage system so that way when you deplenish all your energy if you have some stored over here you can then just go ahead and empty out your storage bank and it replenishes your energy for however much you had stored and you're good to complete continue to do story missions and etc so uh, this game does feel very free-to-play friendly. Limit breaking doesn't appear to be as big of a deal as a lot of people thought so at first. Again, I think it's going to come down to just are you guys on the same level as far as like this character is 499, this character is 499, or this character is 999, this character is 999. Because yeah, if you're going against someone who's level 500 and your character is level 100, yes, you're going to be at a huge disadvantage and probably going to lose that because you can do like no damage to them. The health's going to be significantly higher and they're going to like one-shot you. So, anyways, guys, this game appears to be incredibly free to play friendly. I like some of the stuff they're doing from discount summon, something we never really we've that's a, a daily discount summon. That's something we've never seen in Dokkan Battle. Plenty, plenty of give outs on the premium currency, and as events and more stuff releases, it looks to be a pretty decent way to continue to obtain the premium currency, and that way you don't feel so capped like you do in Dokkan Battle, especially with the inclusion of daily missions, guys. Not just like missions that come around whenever new events come out actual daily missions new things to do every single day whether it be go do this pvp match go uh run this event go do so many adventures etc to give you set premium currency so i'm excited about this game guys i really think once we hop in we can start playing the story we start doing all these different things with it we're all going to really enjoy this game and a lot of you guys have been super worried about it not being free to play friendly i think you guys are in pretty good hands on this game definitely feel free to let me know down below what your thoughts are so far on this game and everything else i look forward to hearing back from you guys but as i said a little bit earlier if you're new here consider subscribing consider joining the hashtag nano fam today consider slapping like on today's video guys have a great great day keep on keeping on nanogenic off and i will see you all in the next video. Bye, guys.